Hey, what's up guys, John here. We're gonna see something very big in the housing market, something massive, something we've never seen before. A lot of people think that, hey, we're in an inflationary environment. You need to buy real hard assets and everyone is running out there to buy homes. Now I have a, a case that I'm gonna present to you of why I think that's probably a bad idea for most people and why I think we're gonna be stepping into a massive potential problem. Now they're saying that we have upwards of seven hikes for 2022. Seven hikes in 2022. And the next hike, the Fed's saying that it could be a half a point rate hike. Now, people say that that needs to happen because of inflationary concerns. What I think is interesting is that most people think that a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 5% or 5 and a quarter percent, but in reality, if your credit score is between 680 and 699, it's 6.351%. It's only lower at 5.325% if your credit score is like around 800 and above. So most borrowers are likely gonna get loans in the sixes, mid sixes or low sixes, or maybe high fives. But when you take that into consideration with the fact that mortgage rates are 2.875% eight months ago, $500,000 purchase, $100,000 down, 20%, 30 year fixed rates, $2,169. Now that same exact loan today is $2,998. The difference is $824 per month more for the same exact house, $824. Now, if you factor in $200 for car insurance, $100 for a cell phone bill and monthly food intake, that's probably the difference of monthly cost just by rising mortgage rates. It's substantial, it is substantial. And the increase is about 38%, a little over 38%. So we're looking at this, people say, okay, well, people that bought properties, they're fine. But my argument with this, why I think that that is gonna be a very different type of relationship than it has been in the past, is that people that qualified for a lot of these mortgages, they bought these properties and they bought them, they were very excited on these purchases based on just borrowing cheap money and relocating for work, or just simply moving from an expensive city and buying a really nice house. But what's unique here is that the parameters in which they qualified for these loans, their debt to income ratios are likely gonna be changing as we start to see oil prices continue to rise and electricity bills going through the roof, electricity prices and customer debt are rising. They'll be suffering, warned consumer advocate in Massachusetts alone, electric and gas companies account 90 days or more past due now exceeds half a billion dollars. Half a billion dollars, right? and Clever uh, Seeking Alpha, they said, if I told you that home builder stocks are now down 30% for the year, would you believe me? This year, what if I told you that these same home builders are trading less than 5X earnings in many cases, implying a massive slowdown in earnings or even losses for home builders? I covered this earlier this year. The actions of investors in home builder stocks implying that the housing market is about to see a substantial correction mirroring similar price action seen in 2006, 2007, when earnings were high, but trouble loomed on the horizon. Meanwhile, sell-side analysts continue to raise earnings estimates while panicked home buyers are still scrambling to purchase homes irrespective of price. These two scenarios here to consider. Now, irrespective of price, when have we seen this in history? We've seen this, the dot-com crash, we've seen this in crypto run-ups, we've seen this uh, tulip mania, we've seen this a bunch of different uh, bubbles. We've seen this happen when people just disregard core fundamentals and they just run out there and buy, buy, buy. Now, am I saying the real estate bubble as a whole is, is overvalued and you know we're in a massive real estate crash? Not in the two to $400,000 range. I think that price point is going to hold up so much better, mainly because of core fundamentals of discount to replacement value. The true value of the cost of the land versus the increase now cost to build that property is going to equate to a, to a number, you add those two up, that's the cost to rebuild a brand new structure. A lot of these older homes, you can't build them for what you could buy them for. And Blackstone is a really good example of that. They founded Invitation Homes, and when the market crashed, they went out and bought between 80 and 100,000 properties on that core formula. Now, I think that price point between two and 400,000 is gonna hold up a lot better than the price point of 500,000, 800,000, a million dollars plus because if you're buying these properties, let's say for example, a million dollar home, which now is not crazy, 
Everyone almost, it seems almost like everyone has a million dollar home. If you live in any city, your house is probably a million dollars. That property a year ago, if you finance the entire million dollar purchase, just for an example, it would be about $4,200 to borrow that for the monthly payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. That mortgage at a 7% or 7.5% rate, if they continue in this direction, the Fed continues, it might be $7,000 or $7,500 per month. The difference is substantial. It's massive. People can only afford so much. Wages are not increasing at the rate in which property values would have to stay at for people to continue to be able to afford these expensive homes. The big question is how does this look when we couple in, right now we're already starting to see lower home prices, but when we couple in rising food prices across the board, right now they're even talking about this March runaway energy prices and higher food costs could mean hotter consumer inflation since 1981, 1981. I think that we're gonna see inflationary concerns continue throughout 2022. I think things are actually gonna get worse. I don't think things are likely gonna get better. Uh, I think that we're gonna be stepping into this environment where the Fed, can, the Fed acts as though they have control and that they can continue to you know, ramp up and down the economy with interest rates. I think that if they continue in this direction with interest rates, hiking every month or every you know 45 days from now until the rest of the year they're going to destroy the economy everything is going to fall apart and become more clear right now a lot of people are in denial they say the housing market's booming it's going to continue to soar you know we have that this shortage of five million homes we have all these things working for the housing market there's no way we're going to see a pullback my debate is people can only afford so much they can only afford so much and all of this is all coming to a head at one time. I personally believe that we're gonna see a very big change of confidence in the housing market, but this does not mean the entire housing market is going to fall apart. I also think that people are gonna have a harder time qualifying for mortgages, as I mentioned, based on their income, and because of this, there's gonna be more demand for rentals. So, most likely, rents are gonna to continue to rise, and as rents rise, landlords are gonna do extremely well, and the renters are going to end up getting squeezed. So the whole housing market's not going to fall apart, I believe. I do think we're likely going to see multifamily potentially continuing to do well. And we're also going to likely see mobile home parks continue to do well. But luxury real estate, that's probably going to be do really bad. I think that's going to be a real big problem. And I think that we're going to even see people that you know, in that two to three to four hundred thousand dollar range that own these properties simply get squeezed out. But I think there's going to be so much demand for that product that the that value is not going to fall too much. We will see. What do you think about the housing market? Where do you see this all going? Do you think we're stepping into a hell, an economic hell, like I do? Because to me, a hell is when no one can really afford anything. That to me is like a, a real hell. And we have a trillion dollars in credit card debt, 1.4 trillion in auto loans, 1.6 trillion in student loan debt. Right now they just extended the student loan debt commitments. So when that actually becomes due, we're gonna see more and more and more pain. We're not seeing the true aftermath of this economy because people are past due on bills. People can't afford bills, a lot of bills. And because of that, there's all these protections and moratoriums and all these different uh, extension programs that are helping people, but it's also muffling the truth as the true health of the economy. What do you think happens in 2022 in this housing market? Do you think we're gonna see the interest rate hikes go to seven and a half or 8% on a 30 year fixed? We're already in the sixes and we got seven more hikes to go. Where do you see it going? Drop your comments below. Let's have a conversation about this. Subscribe to my second YouTube channel. I'm gonna leave links pinned down below, top comment. I'm gonna turn that into a podcast. Some awesome content gonna happen on that channel. A lot of really smart people are gonna to come to that channel. We're gonna have some great discussions. And also on TikTok where I post between three and five times a day. I'll leave links for everything down below. Catch you guys later. One-on-one -on -one call. To get a one-on-one -on -one mentoring and a personal consultation tailored around your YouTube channel or your real estate project, click the link in the description below this video and register for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me.